Hi folks, it's Andrea. AndreaBelliniArt.com is where you can find me. And I'm working in the studio today and I've been thinking about you. And so I thought I would introduce a nice visual tool today that I use on the regular um, for lots of different reasons. And it's called an eco map. Eco map. So it's called an eco map because that's short for ecological, um, which means that it was a tool um, created in the 70s to organize um, systems and um, about living organisms and their surroundings. So that means you, you are the living organism. Um, and it's a tool for you to really um, take a nice look at the resources that surround you um, and some of the resources that maybe are inside. So um, let's take a nice stretch uh, and then we'll cut over to creating our eco map. Okay, so the burning question is always where do we start? So let's start our eco map uh, where we start most things by centering ourselves. So I do like using Sharpie, but um, I like using pencil to start because sometimes you want to move things around and make adjustments. So pencil is a smart way to go. And I'm going to use this fancy little palette um, to make my marks, but you can use old school. You can use a can and trace. You can use objects around your house to make your smaller circles. Um, a can is always a really good way to start. But to make it a little bit easier for you to follow along with me, I'm going to use the circle palette. And I'm gonna start with the largest circle, pretty much in the center, and then I'm going to also draw a little bit smaller circle inside of it because I'm going to give myself this healthy little boundary. And so this is going to represent me, Andrea. And inside this little healthy boundary, I'm just going to think about three qualities, just off the bat, three qualities um, that are my strengths. So definitely one is that I'm creative. Um, and then I'm open-minded, which really helps when I'm working with a team. And I value humor, and I feel like that's one of my strengths. So I'm just going to start with that. Um, and then obviously I have some room to include more things. So this is my first layer, my first draft of my eco map. So. Where do I go next? Well, after I have put me in the center of this eco map, um, I feel like it's time to ask myself, who do I talk to on a regular basis? And who are my healthy, loving supports that are the closest to me? So I'm going to choose a slightly smaller circle and start including those relationships. And where you lay these out is really up to you. You can work much bigger than this as well. It's really nice sometimes to do something that's more poster board size or just on a nice big sheet of paper. Sometimes I break um, paper bags open and lay them flat and they're like really nice big size and then it's eco-friendly. So that's just a side note. So maybe I have here, you know, the first thing that um, typically somebody thinks of when they think of supports um, can be friends and family, but I want to get really specific. So the person, the person that I put here doesn't have to be somebody I have a perfect relationship with. So instead of putting family and making it general, I'm going to put brother. I might put even put his name, which I'm just not going to do for the sake of this video and my mom because those are the two people in my family that I have um, strong support with and for. So that covers that aspect for myself. I could definitely go further, but I'm just giving you some examples. The next example might be something in my community or friend, um, some strong relationship here. Um, so I have um, a mentor who is in the creative community with me. And so I would put their name there, okay? Then the next layer will be coming back in and putting some more circles. And those circles would include things 
Let me give some examples of maybe somebody in church or spiritual community. Um, here might be some place where you engage in fitness or a community center where you engage in ongoing, ongoing learning. Those are examples of another layer of support. So um, other things to consider would be, for example, um, I have online community that I tap into for support here. So I might want to draw another circle there. Um, I might have, I might want to put community and then branch off and put little satellites outside of that that represent different people in that community. You can definitely start playing around with the way that you feel like your ecosystem should be organized, depending on what your life looks like. But you wanna keep asking yourself questions and think about who you engage with on a regular basis, daily, monthly, seasonally. So, we're working layer by layer and excavating our supports. We don't wanna get caught up in how many circles we have. We just wanna ask ourselves, are they solid, healthy supports that are real in our life? So there might be someone we're not even thinking about. So I'm gonna add a little circle. Maybe I'll go even smaller just because it's not as much of a personal support but I'm gonna start thinking about people who I engage with on a regular basis, then maybe I don't know them as well, but they are certainly part of my encouragement circle and part of my um, daily support. So for example, I have someone named Ms. Bev, who works at the store, like the little corner store that is near my house. I see Ms. Bev on a regular basis. She is a community member that always asks how I'm doing, checks on me, and I check on her. And we make sure that we just have nice little moments where we are uh, supporting each other's life and checking in to make sure that we're feeling good and if we're not, we lift each other up. So sometimes you could put some people on there that you might not even have as close of a personal relationship or might not know everything about you, but they land on your support system eco map. The next layer would be how do you gather knowledge? How do you gather information? How do you gather wisdom? Which is applying knowledge to your life in a beautiful way. So how do you love and create through different things in your life? And this is usually where we start to include, I know it's not necessarily the most personal relationship, it's more of a one way, but this is where we might want to start including Music, art, and then also thinking about books or podcasts. These are relationships in our daily life or weekly life, however, however often you engage in these different activities. These are things that are part of our energy. They're part of our encouragement. Um, and they're a great source. So I include them on my eco map. The next layer would be to start thinking about um, the bigger circle, which is nature. And that can really be a beautiful thing to include. So I don't personally have a pet right now, but animals are a big part of what I engage with and it's part of my support system. Sometimes that's about um, going to visit animals or spending time with other people's animals. Sometimes it's just watching an animal video, <laughs> which I think a lot of us can relate to. They bring us something on our eco map. Now this next layer that I wanna talk about is a little bit more difficult for some of us, but it should be included, I think, and you see how this feels for you. Um, the next layer would be adding ancestors. So sometimes I like to do this um, a little bit more of like a bigger circle on the outside, or you can see how it feels for you to make a circle, like a little altar circle 
a little watchful circle. Ancestors and lost loved ones. Okay, so I have people that are definitely um, part of how I feel encouraged and loved and cared for and part of who I am. And they are no longer with me, but they are with me through spirit, even though they're not in my daily life. And so I like to put a circle that represents them as well. Sometimes that can be a really strong relationship. So sit with your eco map, think about what should be on it, ask yourself some of these questions, ask yourself some other questions about as you walk through, and um, what else do you want to add, okay? Now, there is um, a bigger circle that you can include. It might be a little hard for me to show you on camera, but... Um, you can also include a circle that encompasses everything. And that represents the circle that we're, that we're all in our human family and we have people that we don't talk to empowering us and we have this beautiful bigger container that we are part of. So we can breathe into that energy and include it on our eco map. Another one that I like to consider and include often is an empty one. And I used to put a question mark in this little empty one. But then I started putting a little box that looks like a gift. Yeah, you can see that. Because sometimes there are things on our eco map that does not come into our radar either while we're creating it or sometimes even while we're living our life. Sometimes there's supports that just are surprises and that's really nice to include as well. Okay, so your next step or your next layer after you've contemplated some more of the different um, resources and people that you want to include then you start thinking about your connection with them. And so you might decide that you want to do some stronger lines. This is what traditional eco maps include, is strong bonds are represented in a certain way between you and that resource. And then some of the ones that are just, just more ordinary, just regular supports would maybe be just one line, more singular, yeah? And then maybe you have a connection um, with something that's not as strong. Um, so let's just put another circle here and you maybe wanna put a little dotted line. Maybe there's some conflict, there's a connection there and it's a support, but it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, also, traditional eco maps suggest that we use arrows. So for example, I might want to do an arrow where the energy flows from both my community supports and back and forth because it's really a nice big exchange. And then, so you go back through and contemplate the connections that you have with each of these different resources that you've drawn onto your eco map. The final layer might be to come back in and use your Sharpie and you can start putting a bigger border on things. You can also contemplate using color in order to start giving things some life and maybe even use a color to represent a certain theme. Like things that are more creative might all be purple, right? So obviously you can get creative with that and trust yourself to come up with the right system. System. Also, you can include little symbols like I did down here where you start creating symbols for different things. There's an, that can, can really lead into a different world of creating your eco map. 
And then there's also another layer that you can include. So if you really want to start getting even more deeper and more deep into your eco map, you can start collecting some collage images. And if you um, introduce the collage image, you might even decide that you want to start with these as you develop your eco map. But so for example, I might want to cut this and that would be representing me. And then I can put um, different things around it. So maybe one of my major supports is going to the movies with a friend. So I would include this into a bigger circle if I had a bigger sheet of paper. Maybe dance on a more regular level, like not necessarily professional dance, but just dancing it out sometimes. It's a big deal for me. So I would choose a circle and use this as one of my resources. Maybe rest would be in one of my circles. So if you start using the collage images, you can see where you might want to use the poster board size. But it's really fun and it kind of gives some life to your eco map that it wouldn't have otherwise. So you can use things that bring animal energy or remind you of lost loved ones, like past pets that you've had, um, or things that remind you of eating healthy or going to the farmer's market to get organic yummies. Anything that you feel like represents something on your eco map that's a support. And you can, you can get crazy with it. So, you know, it doesn't have to be people that you know. It can be people things that support you, like we talked about with music and books. So like India Ari is a really big deal for me. Her music lifts me up. Um, and then sometimes when I'm feeling a little bit more bashful about being who I am, I might tap into Prince, David Bowie. And so I might include these things on my eco map and make a eco map collage of my strengths and resources. So these are just some different ideas. You want to put strengths and resources, right? There we go. And um, play with it. See what yours should look like. You know, you have lots of different ideas here that I've thrown out um, and different ways that you can think about your map, both from specific people as well as energetics and create the different layers. Take your time, so no, re no reason to rush, yeah? So get creative with your eco map. There's lots of ways to approach it. Uh, there's different layers, so just kind of go layer by layer thinking about your life, um, and then you can also decide what media you wanna use, uh, collage, pencil. Um, you can even use paint, of course, uh, watercolor or acrylics. Um, there's different ways to approach it depending. So what do you wanna do with it after you've created it? Well, it's nice. It's nice to put it on the refrigerator. It's nice to put it inside the medicine cabinet so you see it when you brush your teeth every day. Um, it becomes a totem and it reminds you of all the different resources you have or maybe some of the ones that you want to have. You put them on there and then you start thinking about how you're going to build a bridge to those resources. I've used these eco maps um, to explore my skill set before a job interview or to get to know people when I start a new project. Um, we all created an eco map and we were able to share our resources and understand each other better because of looking at what's on our map. So it can be a great um, exploratory tool both personally and interpersonally. Um, you can include lots of different um, cultural conversations depending on what lands on people's eco maps. So I hope that you enjoy that. Um, and that you'll give me some feedback on maybe how it was to create one um, or uh, if you have any questions, I'm always here, of course. And then the final thing um, that I want to mention is that eco maps become a meditation tool. So you can feel yourself on your seat, nice and even, build some strength in your stomach and in your core reaching up out of the hips and take your hands to your heart and take a nice long deep breath and we breathe in all of these beautiful resources that we have on our eco map that carries us through our day through our month through our year and we inhale all of that beauty 
and we exhale all of the support and love that we offer to others and to the world when we feel empowered. So I hope today um, that you've enjoyed learning about EcoMaps, nice simple visual tool um, to get you going, get you exploring, and um, maybe just something for your journal. But it's a, it's a nice little visual tool that um, you can spend um, a small amount of time or a larger amount of time on and really get some benefits.